pray, shall we? Yep. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your faithfulness, your kindness. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence that is here with us. Lord, thank you that your word says where two or three are gathered, you are in the midst, and we believe that you are here. We believe with, that you are with everyone who is joining us online. We honor your presence. Uh, we never want to take you for granted. We never want to lose the wonder of who you are, of your beauty and of all your glory. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will continue to teach us and minister to us as we learn from your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, so what I wanted to share with us is just something that's outside of the syllabus, uh, as in it's not in your course. Uh, I'm sharing the screen for those online as well. I'll, I'll share this PDF with you as well, but... Um, right. So... Great. Okay. Okay. I hope you all can see the screen with those online and uh, great. This is awesome. Okay, um, so I wanted to just uh, teach a little bit on worship and warfare because um, in the last class we learned about uh, from Second Chronicles chapter 20. Yes, uh, do you remember that chapter? Uh, anything from that chapter that, that, that you still remember you want to share? What do you remember from Second Chronicles chapter 20 that you can share? Yeah, you can be a little bit more loud or with those online in the chat section. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything, just one point at least, or even two points. What do you remember from the last class, Second Chronicles? Second Chronicles, yeah, is it in the Bible? Yeah, it's, it's yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the whole country was fasting. What's the name of the king? Jehoshaphat. Okay. Like, ah, oh, yeah, Jehoshaphat. Yeah. Fast and pray, walk in faith with God's guidance and to fight against. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> what else? Anything else that kind of stood out for you? I beg your pardon? Yeah. They fought against each other. Yeah, the countries that came to attack Judah, they fought against each other, killed themselves, and uh, they did, Judah did not have to fight even. Yes? Uh, anything else? Sorry, Akko. Acts, Acts chapter 16, yeah, yeah, that's another thing that we learned, Paul and Silas, yeah, Paul and Silas, anything from their life that kind of stood out? Yeah, in a very hopeless situation, they were, they were lifted up praise and worship. A couple of things that stood out that we mentioned was that when you praise, your praise will not only set you free, it can set other people around you free as well, isn't it? Um, that's one of the things that we learned, uh, we looked at. Um, so I wanted to just continue a little bit. This is not there in your notes, so, uh, but I'll share this PDF with you anyways. But I just wanted to dwell on this topic of uh, praise and warfare, okay? Now, just like how Judah, you know, and Jehoshaphat, they were involved in warfare, 
right? And uh, they used praise, uh, you know, for the victory. Um, and so I thought I'd share a little bit and we'll see where we can go from there, okay? <clears throat> so as worshipers, right, as Christians, uh, as prayer warriors, we are the front line of an army, okay? We are in the front line. If you call yourself a worshiper, that means you are in the front line of an army. What does that mean? That means you are in the front line. That's what it is. Okay. It's like front line. What is that dictionary? Uh, no. You're right in the front. That's what it is. Okay. So um, so as worshippers, we are in, in the front line of, uh, of the army. That means it is very easy for you to be attacked. Right? There is no hiding. You can't hide behind another person. Because you are right in the front, it is very easy for enemy to attack you and for you to get hurt. Okay, So uh, as worshippers, you will encounter resistance. Okay, That's the first point. That, okay, What is resistance? Is you are going to advance, you are trying to go forward, but the enemy is going to try and push you. You understood? Yep. Okay. So, uh, Joseph, just come here quickly, Joseph. Joseph, just come. Okay. So, we all have to try and understand resistance. Everybody say resistance. Okay. I'm the good guy. He's the bad guy. Because I'm wearing kind of white shirt. He's wearing black shirt. No, no, no. Joseph is a very good guy. So, um, so, in this case, he's the enemy. So, I'm going to try and advance, right? So, I'm Joshua, Israelites. I'm going into the promised land. You try and stop me. Okay. You stop me. Sure, no. Oh, you stop me. He's saying, okay, stop. It's a traffic police. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to walk towards you. You try and, okay, so, okay. So, he's so nice. <laughs> okay, you just come and say hi to everybody online. This is Joseph, by the way. Oh, the camera is there. The camera is there. <laughs> okay, thank you, Joseph. Okay. So, the thing about it, the, the point about a Christian life, okay, is. You are born into warfare. Like it or not, we are born into warfare. There is an enemy. John chapter 10, verse 10. What does it say? Someone, quick, quick. John 10, 10. What does it say? A thief comes to steal, kill, and have a party with you. No. John chapter 10, verse 10, a very easy verse to remember. I, I have come so that you might have life, Jesus says. But the thief comes to steal. Everybody say steal. That is what? Chor, no? Yeah. Chor bazaar. <laughs> so steal, say kill, and destroy. So the, here's the thing. There is an enemy that just doesn't want to steal your joy. He just doesn't want to steal your happiness or your peace. He wants to steal all of that from you. Like, rob has anyone been robbed before? You have? Your phone. Serene, your phone was robbed. No? Okay. Anybody else been robbed? Pickpocket something? No? Okay, I have not, thankfully. <laughs> but it's not a nice feeling, isn't it? Right? When someone has stolen something from you, it is not a nice feeling, isn't it? You are sad, you are angry, you are filled with rage, all of that. So the enemy, whom we call as Satan, the devil, he just doesn't steal your happiness. He just doesn't steal your peace. He wants to kill you. He comes to steal and then kill you. It doesn't end there. You think, okay, after killing, what more is there? But he wants to destroy. So there is an enemy out there who wants to make you look like you never even existed. 
he wants to make you look like okay there was no person called joseph existed he wants like destroy your entire lineage your generation are you with me right so this enemy the devil that we are talking about is uh, the bible says he entered judas and judas killed himself right now again i'm not trying to put the devil in a pedestal who's like oh let's worship the devil no okay but the whole point of this chapter that we want to look at is is to get to know our enemy a little better okay if you're going into warfare you need to know who you're fighting no yes or no if you're going into fight you don't even know who your enemy is what's the point yeah so let's uh, we kind of begin there is as worshipers we will encounter resistance that means uh you know we are trying to go ahead you will find enemies are you with me so one of the points here why will you find resistance because the devil wants your worship matthew chapter 4 verse 8 and 10 he's encountering jesus right he's telling jesus, jesus if you are really the son of god if the important word there is if if you are really the son of God, throw yourself off the cliff. For it is written in the word that the Most High God will send his angels to guard you. The devil knows the Bible. You can be in Bible college for 100 years and he will still know better than you. <laughs> right? You must be hungry, no? So if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And then, you know, we, we make it look like, um, like it's such, such a small Sunday school kind of an encounter there between Jesus and the devil. And then the devil says, I will give you all of this. Just bow down and worship me. The devil, he wants to steal, he wants to kill you, he wants to destroy you. All of that because he wants your worship. Are you with me? He wants your worship. Uh, I've said this before, the devil understands the power of your praise and of your worship. Only you don't understand the power of your praise and worship. Nothing. Nothing is going. Right? So why will we encounter resistance? Because <clears throat> the devil wants a worship. Because true worship reveals the lordship of Jesus Christ and brings release of his presence and power here on earth. The enemy wants to be enthroned. He doesn't want to be dethroned. You will, as worshippers, you will encounter resistance because true worship, everybody say true worship. Okay, John chapter 4, verse 22 onwards, it says, The Father seeks, the Father seeks, <laughs> the Father seeks doctors, engineers, architects. John chapter 4, verse 22 to 26, very important. 24, 22 to 24. The Father seeks, that means He is searching, He is seeking not just worshippers, He is saying He is seeking true worshippers. Yep. One more time, just say true worshippers. Okay, thank you. So if there are true worshippers, that means there are false worshippers. Okay. So, True worship reveals the Lordship of Jesus, okay? I'm sorry I'm making you do this, but say the word reveal. Everybody, say the word reveal. Okay, so we get the word revelation from the word reveal, okay? Um, so let's say, for example, you take a scarf, right? You cover your face with a scarf, yes? So, when you open the scarf, what are you doing? You're revealing your face. That means unveiling, right? So, you get the word reveal, revelation from the word unveil, right? 
the veil is being opened or the veil is being torn in the temple, isn't it? And so true worship reveals there's an unveiling of the Lordship of Jesus that a true worship brings. And that's why the devil doesn't like that. And so you're going to face resistance. And finally, because praise and worship are effective weapons of warfare. All these chapters you can read uh, when you're free. We went through Second Chronicles 20, Judges chapter 7, verse 20. Do you know what the story is? It's the story of Gideon. Sunday school. Gideon and 300 men. Okay, Acts chapter 16, we went through Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. It's classic. All right, so you go through all of that. Praise and worship uh, is uh, effective weapons of warfare. Okay? Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says, The weapons of our warfare are not physical. That means no, they're not weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortress. Okay, the weapons of our warfare. You're going into warfare, you need weapons, no? Yeah, you're not just going swinging your hands, it's like, hey, let's take a selfie. No. So if you're going into warfare, you need weapons. But the Bible says that the warfare that you and I are involved in, okay, the weapons are not physical. That means it's not it's not man-made, right? The weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of the fortress. So, knowing why do why do not many Christians not engage in spiritual warfare? Why we don't engage like? We know that the devil is dangerous. Why don't we engage in spiritual warfare? Most of us hold back on engaging the enemy because of ignorance. Okay, ignorance is what? Ah, it's okay. He is there one side. I am there my side. Why should I go bother him? Leave him. That is what called ignorance. And the other thing is lack of spiritual revelation or knowledge. Because we don't know enough, we don't engage in warfare. Let me say this one more time, okay? I can't stress enough on this. You and I, we are born into warfare. There is a war that is going over your soul. There is a war that is being fought over your soul. The devil wants your soul. In your natural eyes, you can't see anything. That's why we call this the spiritual warfare. The devil hates you. He hates your family. He hates the generation that will come out of you. He hates your children even before they are born. This is the devil that we're talking about. We cannot ignore and be quiet. You understand? Are you with me? Yes, this is serious business, guys. Okay? <clears throat> so, we learn, what we will learn today, we will learn a little bit about our enemy. We will learn the authority that we have, the attitude in how we should conduct warfare and the weapons. Okay? So we learn a little bit about our enemy. Now this is again not for us to be amazed by our enemy. Alright? It's just for us to understand who our enemy is. The first thing the Bible says is that our enemy is, he is invisible. Okay, what does invisible mean? Well, you can't see with your physical eyes, right? With your natural eyes. So what does the scripture say? So for our struggle is not... Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Okay, I hope people at the back can see the scriptures. It's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, because our enemy is invisible, most of us Christians don't take him seriously. 
Are you with me? Because he's invisible, the devil, nowhere he's going to come and say, I am the devil, worship me. With two horns. He's never going to do that, isn't it? Bible actually calls him, he will come as the angel of light. That means he will come not in the way that you expect him to come. He will come like something nice. Through flowers. So the first thing what we learn about our enemy is that he is invisible. Just because he is invisible, don't take him lightly. Don't underestimate him. Right? The Bible again says that he is walking around like a like a roaring lion. He's waiting to pounce on you. You make one mistake, he will devour you. He will steal, kill, destroy. Only bones. That also he'll take and go. <laughs> Wait, the second thing we the scripture says about the enemy is that he is the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. In which you want it's it says, in which you once walked, you were following the ways of this world. Okay, you are following the ways of this world influenced by the present age in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who is now at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving who fight against the purposes of God. So kingdom of the air simply means that is beyond the physical realm, okay? It's beyond the physical realm. Now, again, we can go into details about it, or you might learn more about it in demonology uh, and all of that. So the second thing what we have to know is that he is the ruler of the kingdom of the air. So first point was that he is invisible. He's the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Finally, he is a thief, liar, and accuser. We saw John 10.10 10 already. right? He's a thief. He's a liar and a accuser. So that is our enemy. What's the three things that we can learn about our enemy? One, he is he's invisible. Second thing, he's in charge. Or he has authority of the unseen realm, the immediate realm. right? And finally, that he's a thief, liar, and an accuser. OK? So that's our enemy. But thankfully, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We don't have to be afraid of him. So we learn, second thing, what we learn is about what the scriptures has to say about our authority. Okay. Let's look at, uh, where's the, verse? okay, there it is. I'm just going to go to Luke chapter 10, verse 19, and read it for us. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. It says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. I have given you authority. This is Jesus telling Let's go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Can we read uh, Colossians chapter 2, 13, 14, and 15? Right, is everybody there? 13, 14, and 15, please. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 onwards, it says, And you who were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Verse 14, By cancelling the record of debt that stood against us, that means there was a record that was accusing us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. By nailing it to the cross, verse 15, 
It says he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. He disarmed the rulers and authorities. What does disarm mean? Let's just say this is the bomb. The enemy had a bomb or a weapon, right? He is armed. So Jesus said, give that to me, you know? So he took the weapon that the enemy had. By Jesus dying on the cross, raising again from the dead, he disarmed the enemy. That means enemy has no power over us. Are you with me? The enemy has no... Most of the times as Christians, we get defeated by the defeated enemy. It's very shameful. I'm not sure how many of you understood that, but the point here is that we have authority. Okay? Everybody say, I have authority. Really? I have authority. Come on, guys. <laughs> I have authority. Come on. <laughs> right? Okay. So, we learned about our enemy. We know, learned that we have authority. And what about our attitude in this warfare? The scriptures calls us or tells us you need to have an attitude of a warrior. Okay? The scriptures are telling us you need to have an attitude of a warrior. Okay? Warriors are brave, isn't it? They are mighty men and women of valor. So that's what the Judges chapter 16, 6. So in Judges chapter 6, verse 12, uh, what do you remember? God encounters Gideon. Yes or no? Okay, so Gideon is, is in the underground and he's thrashing some wheat. You know, he's sad because he does not have food. Philistines keep attacking him. As soon as God comes, the first thing God calls Gideon is, you know what? Mighty man of valor. That means you are a mighty warrior. Gideon's response must have been like, is there someone that I don't know? How am I a warrior? I'm thrashing wheat. But this is what God looks at you and says, we are more than conquerors because we are to have that attitude of warrior. Okay? So 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God did not give us the spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self discipline okay the, but a spirit of power so we are called to have an attitude of a warrior and we are called to have an attitude of persistence persistence is not giving up you fight once you lose the battle don't give up try again get up try again get up try again are you with me Right, Micah chapter 7, it says, Why do you rejoice over me, my enemy? Even though I fall, I will rise again. Even though I sit in darkness, the Lord is my light. Okay, so persistence. The Lord your God will drive out the, those nations before you little by little. Look at that. <clears throat> that verse, it says, The Lord your God will drive out the nations before you once and for all. It doesn't say that. It is little by little. You keep persisting, one nation at a time, win over them, okay? And finally, what are our weapons? Personal praise, corporate praise, instruments or shouting. Music and praise, praise and worship. And the second weapon is God's word. So we have music, we have worship, we have the word of God as our weapon, okay? Um, in the scriptures that is mentioned, right? 1 Samuel 12, 2, 23, 4, 2 Samuel 5, 19, 5, 23. I mentioned David inquired of the Lord, okay? David asked God. He asked, okay, what should I do? He constantly asked, Lord, if I go now and attack them, will you? Will I have victory? God said, go. Right? And David again asked, inquired of the Lord, if I go now, will I have victory? God said, go. But there was a time that comes, I think in 2 Samuel 5, it says, David asked, 
And God said, don't go now. Go wait under the balsam trees. When you hear the sound of an army marching, go and attack them. Now, all the scriptures are there in the notes. Uh, please read it when you can. So what did David do is, David as a king, he could have said, OK, last time I went, yesterday I went, I won the battle. Today also I will go do the same thing, overconfidence or arrogance. David did not have that. He constantly wanted to hear from God, the word of God. Are you with me? Right? So God's word is another weapon that we are uh, encouraged to use um, in our battle against uh, the enemy. Okay, so I'll just stop sharing that. Um, I'll just leave the rest over there. Are you all with me? Yeah, you kind of understood what we're trying to do here. Okay. We're, this is not a deep teaching in praise and worship um, or, pr or praise and warfare, but just very uh, briefly. Okay. And so uh, I hope this kind of encourages you to. Um, to engage in spiritual warfare. Don't be afraid in, of spiritual warfare. Like it or not, you are already in the warfare. You might as well fight. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so don't be ignorant. Um, don't live as a passive Christian. Okay. Understand that there is power in your praise and in your worship. Okay. Now we'll look at your notes. So we'll look at a few ways on how you can express. Uh, Worship, uh, where is that? We are in page number 17 in your PDF. In your notes, I don't know which page number. But we are still in chapter 4. Yeah, chapter 4. Okay, everybody online, I hope you all are still alive with me following. Okay, cool, thank you. Okay, so some, here are some of the scriptural expressions of praise. Uh, we've gone through this list uh, already, you know, in the previous chapters, but let's go through that. One of the ways you express praise is singing. Okay, uh, there are enough scriptures that talks about singing. Uh, we've looked at shouting. What's the Hebrew word for shout? What's the Hebrew word for shout? Oh, let me turn the book and see what it is. I forgot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, what are you saying? Chi and all. Okay. It's, it's biblical. As well. <laughs> okay, so one of the ways you, uh, some of the ways that you can express praise is you sing. Um, now, again, you know, there's a quote that says, uh, as a Christian, the question is not if you can sing. The question is, does your heart have a song? Okay, the Bible says, he's put a new song in my mouth and a hymn of praise to our God. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, don't ask yourself, can I sing? Oh, I can't sing. The question is, does your heart have a song? Okay, if you're saved, if you've been redeemed, your heart will have a song. So singing, there's shouting. Okay, shout does not have a specific word. You just shout, scream. Okay, Psalm 100 says, shout for joy, all the earth. Okay, clapping of hands. This is one of the offerings that does not cost us anything. Cheapest offering, clap offering. That also we will not give properly. Let's all clap our hands and you know, welcome the prayer. Softly, no strength, no power, nothing, no excitement. <laughs> okay. Come on, I think it's clapping of hands we can do properly, right? So that's another way of expressing uh, praise. Uh, lifting of our hands. What's the Hebrew word for that? 
What's the Hebrew word for pray, lifting of our hands? Kya baat hai? Huh? All right, guys, come on. You have to remember that, okay? Yeah, yada. Yeah, it's simple. So yada, and the other one is not toda. Who said toda? Toda. Okay, so what's the difference between yada and toda? Someone? Both is lifting of the hands, but what's the difference between yada and toda? Dan. You're saying something, say loud. Yeah. There is someone online? Anyone want to say what's the difference between yada and toda? Toda is more specific. Isn't it? It's more intentional. You are giving thanks for a breakthrough or a victory you have not yet received. Okay? So that's what Toda is. Okay. So another way of expressing oops, of your praise is lifting of our hands. Another way is playing of musical instruments, standing. Just by standing, you express praise. Singing in the spirit, singing in tongues. Dancing. Okay. How many of you like to dance? Good. Dancing is biblical. Very good. Okay. Kneeling, bowing, prostration. Okay. So you, you see this in, in this page, there are only nine expressions of praise. Okay. But the list doesn't stop there. It doesn't say, okay, this is how you should praise. This is all you can use. No, you can express your praise with, if you can paint, by painting, you express your praise. Uh, by doing anything that will honor God is, is an expression of praise. Are you with me? So the expression of praise is not limited to only these nine things, which is standing, clapping, lifting off our hands and everything. No, it's uh, so much more than that. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Of course, okay. <laughs> right, so that's all I wanted to share for today. Uh, not very content heavy. Uh, I'll share the PDF for uh, Praise and Warfare uh, with you all. Uh, go through that, okay? And we'll stop the class here for today. And we'll continue on Thursday. All right, thank you all for joining in. God bless you. Have a good one. Cheers. Take care.